Spearfishing is a sport that you may not know a lot about. The purpose of this video is to educate and encourage viewers to get out there and try it for themselves. Viewer discretion is advised, for in the following minutes of the video, there are many fish that will be shot and killed. All footage I shot takes place in the Wabanaki region, which is the traditional ancestral homeland of the Abenaki peoples of past and present. We acknowledge and honor with gratitude the land and waterways of the Abenaki people who have stewarded the Wabanaki region throughout the generations. So what is spearfishing? The definition is plain and simple. It's using a spear to catch fish or other aquatic animals. There's two main types of spearfishing. One involves free diving, where you dive underwater on one breath and hunt the fish in its own environment, usually with a spear gun, Hawaiian sling, or pull spear. I'll talk about these later. The second is traditional spearfishing, where the fish is hunted from above the water. This type is mainly used by indigenous cultures or in survival situations. To learn more about spearfishing, I contacted local New England diver Eric Bragdon. He was kind enough to answer my questions. It wasn't really big when I got into it, which is I mean, pretty recently, like seven years ago. Uh, there definitely seems to be more people picking it up. I don't know if it's just, you know, it seems like a lot more people are fishing too in the last couple of years. Uh, so I don't know if it's just going along with that or not, but it's pretty cool to see, you know, more and more people getting out there and doing it. Uh, kind of made it two passions together, snorkeling and fishing. Uh, always seen fish down there. <laughs> it's, you know, it's, it stinks to have a, a day in the boat and you're not catching anything. And then you go for a swim for a half hour and they're just like all around you. Definitely, uh, get familiar with like snorkeling or scuba diving first. I think I'd be a little wary to go around with somebody with a big spear and like a knife on them and stuff. If, if they didn't know what they were doing and it also could be like little freak out situations. Uh, so definitely be comfortable in the water too. And uh, like anything, th buddy system. The buddy system? This is a term I recognize from my research. You don't know if you're gonna get tangled in a rope, you know, somebody's tr old trap line or something. Oh, yeah. um, so usually, you know, I'll have like a knife on, on me to cut myself out of any nasty situation if I do get tied up in a rope or something. But uh, I mean, you can get a little bit turned around and stuff or currents can start carrying you out. Um, I don't do it specifically in the Piscataqua, that's where we live, but mm -hmm. just currents are way too high. Uh, and I always have a flag too, I always have like a diver down flag, at least marking the area. There's been a few times where like wave runners come really oh. close to you. I have my flag, but anyway, I don't really get it. I think yeah. they are they feel like they're into every, every buoy or signage out there. <laughs> uh, rascals. Diver down flags or other pieces of marking equipment are extremely important because they will keep boats and watercrafts away from your dive area. So specifically flounder, it's tough because they're in when it's colder, so it's never fun. By the time the water is warm, yeah. they're, they've moved out and they're deeper. Uh, so yeah, definitely shoulder seasons, you know, spring and spring and early fall seems to be the go-to. And I kind of stop mid-summer, it's just too warm, and, but I'm mostly out of my boat by then anyway, trucking yeah. around. Are you ready? Uh-huh. Yeah, uh -huh. Currently, I've gone spearfishing three times and each time the conditions were very different. The first time I went, it was a clear day with warm water and high visibility. The second time I went, it was dark and overcast. The third time, it was ice cold. Diving in these three different conditions gave me a lot of good experience. My first time spearfishing was with my lifelong friend, Aiden Janatis. We've grown up together surfing, fishing, and spending a lot of time in the ocean. He's got so much experience, and he's the best person to have next to you, no matter what ocean activity you're doing. He's surfed Ala Moana Bowls in Hawaii and is an accomplished scuba diver. We started diving some shallow sections to warm up, but it wasn't long before I encountered my first problem. Yo, dude. All right, hold on. First of all, there's a lobster over here. Yeah. Dude, second of all, dude, on one of my dives I saw stars. Is that bad? Yeah. Really? What's that mean? Uh, uh, probably like lack of oxygen in your blood. What should I do? I'd go back. That's like really bad. Really? Yeah. I'll come back with you. No, no, I'll just, I'll just watch you. 
Okay, I'm gonna, I'll pick up this guitar. Yeah. Guess I have lack of oxygen in my blood. While Aiden did some more dives, I decided to film all the wildlife I saw around us. There were northern sea stars sitting on the rocks, and there were a ton of crabs doing their thing on the ocean floor. Before long, I couldn't help but dive down and check them out. Unfortunately, they were in water that was too shallow for our weight belts to counter our buoyancy, so before we could pick them up, we'd float right back up to the surface. The crabs were pretty big, so maybe it was a good thing for our fingers that we couldn't touch them for too long. I really enjoyed the crabs, and it was good to see a healthy population. There were also a good amount of jellyfish floating in the water column. After a while, it was clear that the local residents had had enough of our harassment, and it was time for us to move on. We found a deeper section of water that we thought might hold some fish. The tide had just turned, and by now, after a couple fishless hours, we were ready to get some action. It didn't take too long before we started seeing some fish. I'd never shot my pole spear before, and as you will see, it took a lot of getting used to. This section of water held a lot of cunner and a lot of pollock. The fish we were mainly targeting was tatog, and I only saw one the entire day, and of course I missed. I missed a lot of cunner and a lot of pollock too. A quick disclaimer, this is a lot harder than it looks. I imagined it to be something like shooting an arrow or firing a BB gun, but it's so distracting and it's a lot harder when you're holding your breath underwater. However, it didn't take long for our luck to change. I just got this. Are you going to put it in the catch bag? Yeah. Right, we're gonna have, we have to eat it. Yeah, we get it. Give me yeah, dogs. Give me dogs. That's <laughs> lit. We'll be spared. We'll eat the eyes. We'll eat the tongue. We'll eat the head. For yourself. We're going to put it in the cooler with no ice. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We did end up eating the fish. During my second time out, I went with Aiden again, and the conditions were terrible. It was so cloudy, and it made the water very dark. This may have been to our advantage because I was able to sneak up on a cunner and land the shot. Aiden started focusing on a deeper section and then ended up producing pretty well. We soon had three fish in the bag. Cunner might not taste the greatest, but it's still fresh from the sea. I then went for a bit of an exploration and stumbled upon a school of pollock. I hadn't been close enough to shoot one yet, so I knew I needed to make the shot count. The third time I went out, the water was freezing cold. Aiden couldn't make it today, and I was with my friend Jeffrey Allen. The water was for sure the clearest I've seen it yet. I just couldn't wait to get hunting. It wasn't long before I spotted something that piqued my interest. I think that's a flounder right there. I was about 80% sure it was a flounder, but it also could have been a rock or a weird shaped leaf. I thought back on a conversation I had with Eric Bragdon earlier that week. They're tasty. Mm -hmm. uh, and actually, they're actually pretty hard to find. It's almost, uh, maybe that, that's part of the draw is actually, because they're not just like swimming around like a normal fish. Like this description couldn't have been more accurate. I was completely unsure if this was an actual flounder or not. I sent Jeffrey down first because I wanted him to get his first fish. I was fumbling around with the camera as he dove, but I got him shooting the fish through the side and the fish just absolutely tears away. We spent the next maybe 10 minutes searching the bottom for it, but to no luck. From all the spearfishing videos I've watched, I've learned a lot of unspoken rules. One that sticks out in this scenario is that if someone hits a fish but doesn't land it, it's game on. Everybody goes after it. I spent a long time cruising through the midsection, just trying to find it again. I kept my eyes peeled for weird shaped rocks or other structures. Eventually, I gave up. I saw this massive crab on the bottom and went to pick it up and all of a sudden, the flounder burst out of the bottom. I looked to see if Jeffrey was nearby, which he wasn't, so I knew it was my turn to shoot the fish. I loaded up my spear and got it straight through the head. Get it, it's one, look, it's one that you got, look, oh, 
I could hardly believe what just happened. I quickly brained the flounder to ensure him a quick death and put him in the bag. Once I had successfully landed the fish, I realized my hunting for the day should probably be over. I was more than content with spending time picking up sea stars and enjoying the ocean life. I think this mentality rewarded me because I saw the coolest fish I've ever seen. It was a juvenile northern puffer. I only saw him for a split second before he took off and before I had to go up for more air. I believe in karma, and I think that cutting your hunting day when you're already satisfied is the best thing you can do. During my short spearfishing career, I feel that I have learned a lot. My biggest takeaway has got to be the beauty and the majesty of the ocean. It's something to respect, fear, and be grateful for everything it gives us. However, spearfishing is pretty hard, and I think Eric Bragdon put this into perspective the best. Yeah, I mean, if I was doing it for food, I'd be a very hungry man. <laughs> put it that way. If anyone watching this wants to set out spearfishing on your own, there's a few pieces of advice I'd like to give you. First is to always dive with a buddy. Things can go south quick in the ocean, and it's always good to have someone by your side. The second piece of advice would be to respect the ocean. It's not a pool, and it can be very dangerous. It's also a piece of nature and needs to be protected. Don't take more than you need. Don't litter. And if you take from the ocean, you have the moral obligation to use your vote, your voice, and your actions to protect it.